Five from Hollywood. The Red Skelton Show, brought to you by Ed's Evaporated Milk. First. To... Donated to the museum by Mrs. John J. Burton. Ah, it's magnificent. And this is a perfect example of Rubens' work, purchased from the estate of the late Andrew Vandergrift. Now, I've seen this somewhere before. Oh, yes. Uh, she won her fame on television commercials. <laughs> <laughs> and this, of course, is by the great Italian master Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, that's odd. It doesn't have a frame. Well, it's even more unusual than you think. Just watch. Oh, you weren't kidding. That really is unusual. It looks something like an overcoat. Yes, it does look like an overcoat, and for a very good reason. What do you mean? Well, there's a very interesting story behind this painting, madam. It all began on the city dump. It was a very cold day, and it was snowing. <laughs> A nice dress for Bridget Bardot, wouldn't you? <laughs> Are you crazy? She'd freeze to death. Well, I know, but it'd keep me mighty warm. <laughs> hey, hey, where about this quarter roll of canvas? Oh, that'll be fine, a canvas. That yeah. would be... Say, maybe we won't need it at all now. It stops snowing. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Stand over here, will you? Now, say it stops snowing. It stops snowing. <laughs> I've heard of big snowflakes, but this is ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Here, give me that thing. I thought maybe it'd be a letter from Mama. <laughs> well, sir, as the pelican said when he ate the hell of it. That ought to fill the bill. Yep. <laughs> you got a hammer and nails. We'll put it out. <laughs> you fool it here, will Yeah, you? I will. I'm getting choked on this plastic snow. <laughs> here, here's the nail. All right. Ready? One, two, let her go. Oh! Oh! I didn't know you was Italian. Oh! <laughs> Somebody stole your banjo, huh? <laughs> what happened? What happened? When you said go, two of my fingers whacked. Oh, now, give me that. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Put it back up over here. Yeah. Yeah. There we yeah. are. Hey, what's under that dirt? More dirt. Yeah. Yeah. What does it say down hey, there? Hey, uh, up. It says, uh, 
Leonardo Da Vinci. Da Vinci? You ever heard of him? No, he sure needs to shave, don't he? Oh, I, I, let's see what Da Vinci looked like when he was a young man. Yeah. Oh, he's a ginger? Yeah. <laughs> That's a realistic painting. Maybe it's not. Maybe I just painted on it. Oh, here we go. Well, you know, I heard about a couple that went out in, out in Pasadena and they found a, a painting worth millions on a dump. <laughs> Well, over in Pasadena, they have a better glass of garbage. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you see that there? She goes, maybe it's there now. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Old Leonardo da Vinci turned out to be Lillian da Vinci. <laughs> you know something? It might, be, it might be worth something. We better check an art collector. A collector? Oh, you think it might be? Yeah, let's go. We got something valuable in here. Here, we better... Here. What are you doing? Have you no sense of responsibility at all? <laughs> if we have a masterpiece, why don't we do something to protect it? <laughs> How are we going to get out of here? You follow me. Mm. <laughs> still no letters from Mom, huh? <laughs> Sorry, madam, our paintings start at $10,000. Yes, Gilbert Galleries represents only the finest artists. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Uh. They're burying them setting up now. <laughs> There's no chance of him breaking up. Look at him. Oh, uh, mm, pardon me, sir. Oh, good afternoon. I'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. You must be a couple of models for a painting of Skid Row. I beg your pardon, sir. My colleague and myself, we have an art treasure. Uh, you don't mean to tell me that you're a collector. You might say that. Yes. <laughs> you two hobos, get out of here. I'm a very busy man. Oh, but wait, wait a hobos. minute. We, we found a painting by Leonardo da Vinci. I don't care who it's by. It's oh, it's a da Vinci. You don't... His mother was frightened by an owl. <laughs> you know. Walk this way, but be careful. You can never tell what's under the snow. You know? On one occasion, I I passed up a Rembrandt, and on another, I, I let a Gainsborough slip through my fingers, but I couldn't live with myself if I if I passed up a, a Da Vinci. My, what a revolting atmosphere. <laughs> oh, I've never seen such a miserable slum. Yeah, if you think this is bad, wait till you get inside. <laughs> Just a minute. This happens to be a G.I. home. A G.I. home? Yeah, gee, I wish I was in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Come, gentlemen, follow me. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, here we are. Yeah, don't do that! Why don't you look in the mailbox? There may be a letter for Mama. <laughs> Good grief, the missing Da Vinci. 
Well, what do you think, Mr. Gilbert? What do you think? What do I think? Well, I think, I think, I think, I think it's absolutely worthless. It's just a, a cheap copy of the original. Oh, you sure? You sure? Yes, of course. Any idiot can see that. Well, you don't have to call yourself names, you know. <laughs> I can always use this canvas to clean brushes. But I tell you what, I, I'll give you uh, $10. $10? Well, now, that's mighty generous of you. But on second thought, I think it's worth more than that to keep the snow out. Snow? What snow? <laughs> Come here, look. <laughs> Here, let me help you out here. Just a moment there. <laughs> Good heavens! If you call me to fly, I'll belt you right over the head. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Freddie. Look. <laughs> you give me this painting. I'll give you the painting. And I'll have this whole Wall plaster. Yeah, boy. I'll plaster you too, boy. <laughs> you know, for a worthless. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, I'm a friend of yours. I walk on them. You walk on them, so can I. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, <laughs> see, I know something you don't know now. Why? You're on my foot. <laughs> hey, you know, he's awful anxious to get that worthless painting. Yeah, I think there's something rotten in Denmark. I think it's closer than that. <laughs> really? Look, why don't I just buy this whole shack? Now you're talking. Now you're talking. I'll give you five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? There you are. Oh, One, two, three, oh, four, four, five. This is deductible, isn't it? <laughs> See, it's, you know, <laughs> now that you bought that shack, how about buying that canvas to keep the snow out? What? What? <laughs> that canvas goes with the shack. No, I don't. You didn't buy the place furnished. Cut <laughs> out all this nonsense. I'll give you $10,000 for that worthless painting. I'm sorry, but this worthless painting is not for sale. All right, I'm leaving, but I'm warning you, you'll be sorry that you didn't sell me that worthless painting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Come here. Close the door, there's a draft in here. <laughs> Wanna know something? What? They didn't build that door very good, you know. <laughs> you know, he may be after that painting, but I think it's us he's trying to frame. <laughs> There is absolutely no doubt about the authenticity of this painting that those hobos have. The brush strokes are da Vinci, the color tones are da Vinci. I tell you that this painting is priceless. Ah, and you want to buy it, eh? Yes. Boy, Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for a uh, Da Vinci? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, look, uh, Gino, as of this minute, you are the greatest art critic in the whole world, aren't you, Gino? Huh? <laughs> if you say so. Yes. Well, now, look, it'll be easy. Those old boys have no idea of what this painting is worth. They have absolutely no notion of its true value. Say, uh. Muggsy, what are you going to do with your million dollars? <laughs> I think I'll buy me a railroad. A railroad? Yeah, I always wanted a feather bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The door. Oh, I thought it was the termite taking up tap dancing. <laughs> yeah? Ciao, senor. Ciao. Oh, you've got the wrong place, my dear man. The mission is up at the top of the hill. <laughs> No, 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 senor. You do not understand. Hmm. Ciao is Italian for hello. Oh? Ciao, 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 ciao. Oh, good. Just like Permit me to introduce myself. Oh. I am Gino Antonio Vittorio Mario Ravaghetti. No kidding. I ordered you once in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> I am the foremost art painter from Rome. Oh. Uh, you have a famous painting here, no? Uh, no, we have a famous painting here, yes. Uh, see, I like that accent of yours. It's kind of catchy. What part of Chicago are you from? <laughs> 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 I never met 
so many hokey legitimate actors. <laughs> Please, senor, I am from Florence. Yeah, I didn't ask you where you were from. I, I asked you where you were from, not who you were from. <laughs> Mamma mia! Mamma mia! What is that? It's a picture of his mommy. Oh. Mamma mia! What a disappointment. Yeah. What? I am wasting my time coming here to see that painting. Oh, it might be worth a lot of money. Ah, it is worth nothing. I have seen better artwork on top of a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, Freddy. Good morning. Well, what a coincidence that you should show up at this time. Well, I was just taking my morning's constitutional in the city dump. <laughs> and I thought I'd drop by. <laughs> well, I thought I'd just drop by and see how you boys were doing with your worthless painting. Yes. Mm. I'm going to look that all up after the show. <laughs> Remember what happened to old W.C.? <laughs> hey, you have something I think you should know, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Take a look at that, would you? Jack Parr walks off of... No, no. <laughs> the headline. Read the head. Hobo's painting worth fortune. <laughs> Get along with this. Priceless Da Vinci found in Hobo's shack. Leading critics agree on onsen tickety of rare painting. Onsen tickety? Yeah, it rhymes with the Vinky. Oh. <laughs> it might do you good to know that there were a few art critics here earlier today. Daddy, look, I, I must have that painting. It's, a, it's an obsession. No, it's not. It's a da Vinci. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a million dollars. I'll give you a million dollars for that worthless painting. No, I'm sorry. I would have given it to you for the first ten that you offered me. But you tried to cheat us, and that's what we won't stand for. We won't work with crooks. That's why we live here. We're living a clean life. Oh, but I must... <laughs> I must have that painting, Freddie. Once I had an, a, an original Utrillo, and once I had an original Gauguin, but I, I, I have never had an original Da Vinci, and I must have that painting. I must, I must, I must, I must, I must, I must, I must. <laughs> you know, I once had an original skeleton show. <laughs> With him? What? He's been watching too much of Loretta Young. <laughs> <laughs> Rare old painting worth six million dollars. Yipe! Right here and he's gonna steal a painting. No, no, go, well, over my dead body. That's the way it's gonna be, because he's got a crazy look in his eye, and I think he's carrying a gun. Well, who's afraid of a gun? You are! Oh, thanks for telling me. Here, yeah. put it out here. Put it in the closet. Put it in the closet. Under <laughs> here? Uh, no, that'll be the first place. Just put it under the rug and close the door. Rod! What, Rob? Oh, that's right. They've got that too, didn't they? Yeah. Please, please close the door. There. Here, here. I I'll take care of You go stall him off. I I'll take care of I'll take care of him. All right. Well, Da Vinci, either you get cut up or I do. It looks like it's going to be you, Da Vinci. Ah, uh, hello, Mr. Gilbert. Are you looking for Freddy? Yes, I want to talk to him about that painting. Oh, the painting? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. He, he took the painting and he went over to your place. Oh, he did, did he? Yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, didn't see him. You didn't, huh? No. Well, did you come over the park and the, through the, the tunnel and then over the bridge and down seven? Yes, yes. No wonder you didn't see him. He never goes that way. <laughs> We don't care as long as it snows. Bees and birds says we're on the nose. <laughs> What's the needle? Oh! Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> 
didn't harm it. Didn't harm it a bit. There we are. <laughs> Better than a chin chin. <laughs> Sisters. <laughs> yeah, come right in, Mr. Gilbert. It's all right. All right, Freddy. <laughs> Where is that painting? What painting? That painting. There's no painting there. Look, Freddy, I'm going to get my hands on that painting if it's the last thing I do. You're mighty warm. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. Where is that painting? Please, you're wrinkling my heart, Schaffner, and Davinci. <laughs> I mean, my overcoat. Where is that painting? I cut it up. You cut it up. Yeah, I cut it up. You cut up a Da Vinci. <laughs> An original Da Vinci. <laughs> you said it was worthless, remember? Oh, no, no. Oh, you give yourself a headache doing that. <laughs> furniture, too. <laughs> now, I didn't hurt the painting. See, I cut around that. It's still good. Now he tells. <laughs> that was a fascinating story, and that explains why the painting is in the shape of an overcoat. Exactly. When Freddy donated this painting to the museum, he insisted that we keep it in this form. Pardon me, please. Uh, Excuse me. Nice shade of painting. I forgot something I left in the pocket up here. Just there. My cigars. I haven't had a price for a month. Good heavens! A letter from Mom! <laughs>
drift, you know. <laughs> now, I ain't seen you for about six months, sir. Uh, did I? Why, what have you been doing? <laughs> I'm pretty hokey, but even I ain't gonna tell that joke. <laughs> oh, come on now, Dick. I ain't seen you for six months. What have you been doing? Here it comes, folks. <laughs> At me again. All right, I ain't seen you for six months, did I? What have you been doing? Six months. <laughs> <laughs> Never be a success. There's too many moving parts. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Dead eye. I haven't seen you in quite a while. Yeah, that's because I ain't wearing that dress. <laughs> Say, gal. <laughs> why don't you and me go for a little ride out on the range tonight? Well, why the range? Why, because out there seldom is heard a discouraging word. <laughs> Give us a kiss, gal. With you? I got. Hmm? <laughs> oh, come on, gal. <gasps> what happened, Dad? I you don't kiss like you used to. Well, I know. The rains came early this year and took all of the curl out of my plucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad, I. Yeah? Get your hands off her. She's my girl. Yeah, you wouldn't say that if you were down here. I'm up here. Well. <laughs> but you gotta die on another network. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime a prop gets a bigger laugh than me, it's gotta go. <laughs> Is that? Did you have to shoot him? Yep. I could have starved him to death, but it wasn't quite as visual that way, you know. <laughs> them because they're on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop that on your foot unless you've got blue cross. <laughs> Watch that table, it's still alive. <laughs> One of the legs is still kicking. <laughs> <laughs> I can put the clean up on myself. <laughs> cut him. Yes, sir. Try and sneak one of these up your sleeve. <laughs> when I was a small, puny boy, puny, that's a small horse. <laughs> when I was a small, puny boy, I used to build myself up playing solitaire with these things. I'm getting tired. One, 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 one more. more. Well, you deal them. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Here, looks like an idiot, boys, from Las Vegas, don't it? <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> All right. Anybody open? I open with five dollars. Five dollars? I'm <laughs> sad. I'll raise your ten. Yeah, well, I'm staying too. And I'm going to raise this dry back here. <laughs> Twenty-five. <laughs> How many cards do you want? 
One. One. How many cards? None. How many? Oh, excuse me. Well, I'll take five. <laughs> <laughs> this don't happen to happen. Right here. <laughs> okay. What you got? I have a flush. Full house. Four kings. I win. I got a royal flush. Ten of hearts. Jack of hearts. Queen of hearts. King of hearts. And the ace. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, there's one in every crowd. <laughs> I think the Indians are coming. Right for your life. He thinks the Indians are coming. Good heavens, the town is surrounded by Jeff Chandler. We'll hold out, but first, we're going to have a little intermission. Bring in prisoner. Oh. <laughs> you realize that this is the first time the Indians ever went out over the Cowboys in television? <laughs> Cut me down, boy. We're running late. <laughs> yeah. Chief. Oh, trying to get away, huh? <laughs> Fair my life. I'll make it worth your while. I'll get you a job posing for Benny. Me, great white father. Oh, I don't care about your social life. Oh, a pony Indian, hey? Sit down. See the three things. The we pony. make powwow, then we kill you. Oh, I get it. Then it's powwow right in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you'd have a nice little collection here. Anybody I know? <laughs> Sam. <laughs> what happened, Sam? <laughs> Don't tell me that you got Jaja Gabor too. <laughs> Nice cure for dandruff. We smoke pipe. You make peace with spirit. Good. Wait. Put on filter. Screen out irritants. <laughs> okay. <coughs> what are you smoking, mucklucks? <laughs> Time for you guys. Time for take scout. Time for beanie. Yeah. <laughs> I should have taken the Indian. Part. I can see that now. <laughs> Don't kill me. I'm too young to die. I'm too old to die. I'm at that awkward age in between. <laughs> Look, I'll do anything for you. Please. I think you watch your stuff. <laughs> please, please. Don't kill me. See, I'm stalling till the uh, till the soldiers get here. Please. <laughs> Don't kill me. Sir. Me spare your life on one condition. How's that? You join tribe, marry my daughter. Me become an Indian? Yes, you join tribe, me give you big title. Oh? Call you Crazy Legs, all American Indian. <laughs> Indian's part. Yep. Come in, brave. Oh, don't burn me at the stake. You come. Um, no, chop my head off. Yeah. Oh, oh, a hot steak's better than a cold shot, I guess. <laughs> Ain't this exciting? I know hokey, but exciting, huh? <laughs> carry on, boy, carry on. Come, my daughter, see white man die at stake. Yeah, kids, I got a lot of steak. Well, <laughs> bangles, <laughs> bevels, and beans. Brother, <laughs> do dance of death. Dance of death, kids. Too bad I'm tied up, kids. <laughs> Oh, I 
like with fun shopping in the dump today. Eat. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I do believe I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> Boy, that smog's getting worse every day. <laughs> That's not the peas, it's the schmug. <laughs> I forge myself tonight. Beans. Oh, I love beans. One, two, three, four. No, oh, there's three. One of them's moving. <laughs> For everybody out now. Oh, an egg. An egg. Now, why would anyone throw an egg away? It says, oh, it must be a brand name. It says McCoyan. <laughs> International Airport, 1959. <laughs> now, why would it... <laughs> Personality, all right. Huh? <laughs> oh, good heavens! Get that out of here. Here, here. Are you alone? Well, not exactly, no. I mean, followed. They're after me. They want to steal my invention. Well, they're after me, too, but it ain't for an invention. <laughs> You're an inventor? The world's greatest. No, too. Professor Phineas T. Munson. Munson? Yes. No. Well, what is it? In here is a secret that will revolutionize the world. No kidding. What is it? Shh. You've invented a shh. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous. They've already got them. Every hospital in the country's got them. I even know one old radio station that still has them. We mustn't let them catch me and steal my invention. No, we mustn't let them catch me. Please, guard it with your life. I will. Whatever you do, do not look inside and yes. do not open the box. Oh, I will do that, sir. Oh. <laughs> I call a nervous man. <coughs> Sounds like somebody else is coming now. Excuse me. You have seen a man come running through here? Oh, is a man about this tall? Yes. Yeah. He have on a brown hat? Yeah. With horn rim glasses? Yeah. Yes. And, and he talk kind of funny once in a while? Yeah. Nervous like? Yeah. Yes. Uh, he had a big black box? Yeah. yeah. Where is he? I haven't seen him. How does he smell fishy here? Naturally. This month has R in it. Fishy <laughs> probably knows nothing. Come on. Ah. Boy, they all seem to want this little black box all of a sudden. I wonder what could be in it. Oh, I better not open it. I'll just take a peek. No, I better not either. I'll just pretend it's not there. That's what I'll do. Oh, I wonder what it is, Bill. Oh, gee, if I could just say what I did at rehearsal. <laughs> that I wouldn't open. Well, I didn't promise. Let me open it. Please, 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 please. Now, back away, back away. Alfred, he who looks beyond this place will find himself in sheer disgrace. He who seeks to peer within 
is guilty of a mortal sin. Uh, Isn't that the you? Ready? Where did you read that? On a dressing room door down at the burlesque theater. <laughs> What are you doing here, anyhow? Well, as a matter of fact, Betty, I came over to see if I could spend the night here. Yeah, yeah. Spend the my night? place. Yes, my place is being redecorated. Redecorated? Oh, yeah. Well, laddie, down. Oh, no, I mean it, really. I mean it. Yes, they're redecorating my apartment. They are, really? Yes. You mean they're finally going to paint that smart bench, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, well, Betty, I found out the hard way. You did, yes. find it? Good. <laughs> I see you've earned your stripes. <laughs> Idea. You certainly yeah, can. Yeah, you yeah, certainly yeah, can. Here. Yeah. You can sleep in the Murphy bed. In the Murphy bed? Yes. I sleep here, and your bed is in the wall here, the Murphy bed. Here, we get this right now. There you go. <laughs> Johnson had that box with him before he reached that hobo shack. Yeah. But he did not have it with him after he left. So he must have given it to that bum. Yeah. Tanya! Yes? Tanya, there is a certain hobo who has in his possession the invention we are after for our country. It is your job to get it from him. Do you think you can do it? Do I think I can do it? <laughs> Really? You know the black box? Yes. Freddy, I directly opened it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, go back to sleep and dream what was in it. <laughs> you ain't tricking me. I'm, I'm sorry. You're not getting in there. I promised the inventor I would not open it. That's the way you feel about That's it? That's the way I feel about it, sir. Very well, in that case, see you on the campus. The campus? <laughs> oh, I thought he would never go. Right, <laughs> four. <laughs> He fold by thumb. I smell blood of an Englishman. I see him right now. Yes, sir, there you are. There's one thing that'll keep him away is water. Good heavens, I sliced up the sky back there. <laughs> I got to peek in here and just take one look. I promised I wouldn't look, so I'll just feel. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's got a zipper on it. Hmm. It worked. Uh, uh, come in. Yeah. Oh, how do you do, sir? Uh, I'm working my way through college, and I was wondering... With a long black beard like that? <laughs> I'm not a very good student. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, as I thought. Now, where did you get the phony beard? Well, I picked it up off of the Beverly Hills trash pile. I think it's one of Jack Benny's old toupees. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Benny don't wear a toupee. He's not stingy either, but it gets a laugh. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait from there. I'll wait from there. Here, take this phony disguise with you. Now, out, out, out. Mr. Albert Boy, he's really, I tell you, he's dying to see what's in here. There's nothing worse than being nosy, as one uh, <clears throat> fellow said to the other. Oh. 
Come in, come in, Alfred. You. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, you're Alfred. Hey, Alfred, what a disguise. Jane Mansfield must have thrown away a few things on that trash pile, too. Oh, Jimmy boy, my name is Sonia. Sonia? And uh, you have something that I want. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that works both ways, ladies. <laughs> Mr. Mantini gave you a little box. Yes. And now he wants you to give it to me. Oh, now, just a moment. I hardly know you. How do I know I can trust you? You're a, free, it's a, a stranger. I, I, you're a stranger. You don't trust me. I don't. Me well. What's the matter? <laughs> Wait just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Now do you trust me? Yeah, but I don't trust myself. <laughs> you know, that's pretty good acting on my part, by the way. <laughs> I just saved us all from blowing Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in jail in two minutes. You know? Oh, I know what the trouble is. What is the trouble? Well, well the, the matter with you is that you don't want to give that box to anyone but Mr. Monson. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's the idea. And <laughs> I have an idea. Uh, this is the address of my hotel. Oh, what a handy little briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good heavens, that's still warm. <laughs> this is your address? Not tonight, who could come? I think you gave me the wrong one. It says Playtex. <laughs> Down. Oh, upside down. <laughs> oh, it's more. Oh, yeah. Tonight we could come to dinner. Dinner? Yes, we would have all oh, soft lights and sweet music. For dinner? And and Mr. Munson would be there. Who needs Mr. Munson? <laughs> oh, and, and of course we would have something to drink. Oh, yes? <laughs> uh, shall we say seven? Oh, well, you can try seven. I usually conk out after the third or fourth. <laughs> See you later. You know what holds that dress up, don't you? A city ordinance. <laughs> well, skip the gutter, swap the sewer. <laughs> Remember, Tanya, when that hobo gets here, we must get that box from him. Gottfried and I must remain hidden. If he identifies us, we will be of no use to Yugo Banya. Oh, don't worry. Leave everything to me. You let him in, we will hide. How are you, my dear? Fine, thank you. Oh, nice place you got here. Well, thank you. Oh, yes. A light? A light? Oh, yes. I've got a light here for you. Just a minute. I... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Buddy. Uh, may I take your face? Help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, where's Mr. Munson? Well, he's not here yet, but let us go to the window and we should look out and watch for him. Oh, well, be my guest. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> see the view, it is no, lovely. No, I saw the breeze, though. Hey. Oh, I'll have to look out through my minicle here. My minicle. Where's my... Oh, my minicle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, that window's closed, but I keep feeling a draft. <laughs> I better put this box down. It's getting heavy. Oh, my... Now, oh, yeah. Say, that screen, wasn't that just against the, the wall over there? Oh, gee, darling, that is your imagination. My now, imagination. you sit down, and I will get you something to drink. All right, we'll do that. There's somebody behind that screen. I'm going to find out who it is. <laughs> Mr. You know, there's nobody behind that door, but he just hit me. Where did he hit you? Right up here. He's right... That's the place. <laughs> there's somebody behind that screen. I'm going to find out. <laughs> Put your hands up. Right, 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 right. 
of here, Johnson. We've been after these spies for a long time. Okay, let's go. <coughs> you too, fella. <laughs> nice work, Freddy. Mr. Munson, the inventor, how are you? No, I'm not an inventor. Hello? U.S. government. So am I, war surplus. <laughs> And the story of this little box is it's a red herring we use to smoke out the spy. A red herring? Now, okay. Well, how about that? <laughs> a red herring. Now I've got something for dinner. And it assures me a seat on the bus, too. <laughs> The difference between our American institutions and those of our English cousins across the seas is nowhere more apparent than in the field of radio and television broadcasting. We now present our version of the eminent British newscaster, Lord Beaverhead. Are you there, hey? I'll be with you presently here. I got a bit of news. If I could just find it here. It um, was here a fortnight ago. <laughs> I, uh, we have uh, a new way of uh, going to condense the news for you, you know. We're going to bring it right to you. There's a long article here about a man who gets a divorce from his wife because she talked too much. It's a big one of our meat packers here. But uh, instead of taking all that time to do that, we will abbreviate it. Uh, here's the news. Meatpacker cans tongue. <laughs> well, what happened to my monocle? That thing, I'll have to use this till I find it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, and I'll bring you the correct time. When you hear the musical note, it will be exactly two o'clock. <laughs> we put it that way in case we were a bit off, you know. <laughs> Listen for the musical note. <laughs> two o'clock, I wonder what time it is. <laughs> Here's a uh, bit of news that came in. A while ago, oh, it's coming in again now. <laughs> it's a, uh, oh dear me. Looks like we're having a bit of trouble in egg wipe. Egg wipe. E G Y P T. Oh, Egypt! Egypt! <laughs> this blasted thing, if I could only keep it in there, it's clearing up. <laughs> I, uh, uh, we have here, you can see, is uh, a couple of the uh, egg wipe Egypt uh, battleships. Uh, they were handed to me by uh, the King Farouk. The uh, joke that I had about that has been cut. <laughs> oh, well, time for tea. Time for tea. <laughs> Little tea never hurt anyone, you know. <laughs> there we are. Just slice that around there a bit, you know. Little tea never hurt anyone. There we are. <laughs> Sweeten it up a little, you know. Don't <laughs> <laughs> hurt anyone, you know. Oh, careful. Don't get nervous yet, boy. Don't get nervous. There you are. Still no boy. <laughs> I see here that the uh, Kremlin is going to pave their streets with wooden blocks. Looks like the boys have gotten their heads together. <laughs> Where Joe Stalin is trying to find a serum that will make him younger. Well, that's not possible, but if you leave it up to us, we'll see if you don't get any older. <laughs> now, I would like to tell you about our American movie. Tonight, this movie, it was not shot underwater, it just looks that way. Uh, this picture has murder, robbery, terror, hate, revenge. It's a story about a boy and his dog. <laughs> he stars Errol Flynn, he plays two parts. <clears throat> Both the brother and the sister. Still no good, I <laughs> Hello, are you there? 
Are you there? Would you get me Fort Knox, please? In Kentucky, yes. The United States of America. We don't have a Kentucky in England, you know. <laughs> Hello, Fort Knox. How are you? <laughs> and now I would like to tell you about our sponsor. Our sponsor is good old Cliveden's <coughs> Crumpet Juice. Clavin's Crumpet Juice comes in different sizes. Now, here's the small size to carry around, and there's a prize in every package. Now, here's one in this package here. It's a genuine, uh, it's a genuine... Well, I really don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a genuine, isn't it, though? <laughs> now, that's that in there. And now, in the next size, we have a special prize that comes with that. Gotta put my key away, you know. <laughs> Tastes like <that. laughs> With this size, you get a prize, a surprise package comes with this one. Every box has a surprise. What do you do? Nail it down, Sam? Everyone has a surprise. Well, there's supposed to be a surprise in there somewhere. Oh, well, there's a surprise. Oh, yo. I'm fatigued. I'm fatigued. Now, then we have the larger size, the big, large of <laughs> juice. And with that, we give you a large prize. And this contains all of the vitamins that you'll ever need. Uh, would you step out, please? Would you please? Thank you. Uh, that also comes in the plain wrapper. <laughs> Good morning, Lord. Be ahead. Oh, how are you, Ben? Nice to see you, Ben. Thank you. That's Big Ben. <laughs> we, uh, now I'd like to call your attention. Cliveden's Crumpet Juice makes old men young and young men younger. I hope you keep that in mind. I'll show you what a wonderful product. <laughs> <laughs> Skelton's Film Scrapbook. Pedestrian Polo. Good evening. <laughs> that gets the straight line. Wait till it's over. <laughs> Tonight we're going to have a little educational feature, and we hope that you'll all be very much interested in, and it has to do with traffic. Now, I'll give you a number to call in just a few minutes. I can't give you the number now, as I've done this before. I told you that uh, we'll give you the number during the program, and I will. And as I say, we don't have time to give you the number now. <laughs> but we'll give it all later on in the program. So get your pencils and get the lead out. <laughs> get ready to take down this number that I'm going to give you, which I will give you in just a few minutes. Now, you can write for this book. It's a book on a new game called Pedestrian Polo. <laughs> I will give you the rules and uh, all of the uh, principles of the game as soon as we tell you a few of the things that you have to look out for. There are different types of pedestrians. First, we have the out-of-towner who comes into town and he waits for the light to change and finally decides that he won't cross because of the traffic and he goes the other way. <laughs> Down the block about nine times and he never gets anywhere. In fact, he shouldn't have even come to town. <laughs> the writer that wrote that shouldn't have even handed it in. <laughs> Now we have a fellow that starts out here who is anxious to get over to Joe's place, and he jaywalks. And after he comes out of jaywalks, he becomes an S-walker. <laughs> now an S-walker is a man who walks like that, and then goes back over to Joe's place. <laughs> now to be able to uh, be a good pedestrian, you must be able to jump three ways at the same time. There's another writer bit that does. <laughs> Now, the one thing that you must always remember are when you're driving, especially. Now, there are different types of new things coming out every day. We have the new bumper that has the rubber stamp on the front of it. When you hit a pedestrian, it says, kill in this town. <laughs> Another thing we have is the floorboard that's made out of glass so that you can apologize to the pedestrian after you run over. You must be sporty about this game at all times. Now, there is a three lights. The traffic lights are very important in this game. Now, first is the red light, and then the uh, orange light, and the green light. Now, the... <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Well, it looks like it's green anyhow. I'm colorblind. It don't make any difference. Anyhow, now, the idea is, uh, the principle of these lights is when the green light is on and the orange light comes on, that means go fast so you won't hit the red one. <laughs> now, there are different types of uh, rules that you must follow at all times and uh, playing pedestrian polo. First, the pedestrian. Don't ever be too kind to a pedestrian. You see one, get him. <laughs> now, this is open season, and we have a score. If uh, you hit a man, that is five points. If you hit a woman, that is 15 points. If he's carrying a baby, you add a half a point. <laughs> Now, if you, the other day I hit a guy who was wearing his ham and I didn't know what the score was. <laughs> I don't think he did either. <laughs> now, if you hit a man and knock him down in a sewer, that's a hole in one. <laughs> you can knock him through the air, knock him over 50 feet, that's called a birdie. <laughs> now, one of the most important things to remember while playing pedestrian polo is to keep your windshield clean because you may miss a pedestrian completely, which is very heartbreaking, you know. Now, I, I suggest that you would use Tide. Tide is very wonderful for washing all glassware. This is, by the way, if you haven't figured out, it's the commercial part now. <laughs> this is the side of a window that has been washed with Tide, and this side has not. You can see the difference. <laughs> There's a glass in there. Now, get ready to take this number down. I'm gonna give it to you any minute now. I'm gonna give you the number. I can't give it to you just now. Now, uh, one thing I'd like to call your attention to is what the safety zones are for. That's in case you hit somebody outside of them that don't count. If you hit someone steps out of the safety zone, knock them back in before they get <laughs> Now, a lot of accidents are caused because people really don't know how to drive. Now, coming down here tonight, there was a car in front of me, and I'll tell you, this poor soul didn't know what she was doing. It was an out-of-towner. You can tell by the license plate. We come to this light, red light, a stoplight. She stopped. How do you like that? <laughs> now, I'd like to call your attention about some of the things about Tide. Now, Tide has a new bumper that we're putting out now, a Tide bumper that has a brush in it. This is so when you hit a pedestrian, it sprinkles a little tie over them, and then a can of water comes out and sprinkles the pedestrian, and they get so mad when you knock them down and they get dirty, this way they'll get up and thank you for knocking them down. <laughs> now, Tide is also, here's a car before it was washed with Tide, and here is the same car after it had been washed. <laughs> now, if you're very much interested in this, uh, I would like to call your attention, not only does Tide get clothes cleaner than any soap, and uh, not only does it get glassware sparkling bright, but it gets wash prints dazzling bright. And now we uh, have, uh, what's this? Hand cues? What's this? What's that? Tide is kind to your hands. Oh, Tide is kind to your hands. <laughs> Melvin Scrapbook. How to make a salad. Oh, boy, back on good old Casey again, boy. I someday, boy. Now, look here, Willie. Yeah, I'm your pal. I, I don't, don't mind helping you out of these messes. Yeah. But I'm an MP. I know that means my pal. I you know. keep sticking my neck out. Look, I had to get on KC again. They got a new general coming in here, and I don't want to go over that motor pool and drive around that grass. You know, I got in trouble with one of them guys, you know. He came up to me, and I didn't salute him. He says, how come you didn't salute me? Well, I, I didn't know I was supposed to. He says, you see these two stars? Don't you know what that means? I said, you got two boys in the service? <laughs> Where did you go anyway? Well, I went on a, a furlong. You mean fur alone? No, I went too fur and stayed too long. <laughs> there ought to be something to eat around here. There ought to be something around here somewhere. <laughs> That's a colonel? <laughs> Why, that poor little fellow, I doubt if he's even weaned yet. <laughs> I remember him when he was six foot tall. What happened to him? Oh, that, that's a Texan with all the hot air out of him. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, you do me a favor, will you? Sure. Now I'll, I'll see you, that you get a ride into town anytime you want to go into town. Yeah. You do me a favor. They're going to make me cook for that new general. And will you do me a favor? I'll Have some of the boys on those details to unload some of that garbage up here, will you? <laughs> I will make the finest salad they have ever had. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. Good. Boy, you do that to me, will you? There must be something to eat around here somewhere. <laughs> You'll never get rich. <laughs> you Man, as uh, you are. I'm going home. I wasn't. <laughs> oh, just a moment. I'm oh, sorry. Here, I'm let sorry. me wipe that off for you, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, oh no, 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 no. I no. beg your pardon? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> mm. Ah, mighty fine. Mighty fine. Hey. You'll be cooking in the office's mess in no time at all. Oh. Yes, carry on, old man. Carry on, man. Carry on, Willie. Carry on, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> See, that ain't bad. <laughs> in here for lunch? Don't you realize that there'll be a thousand men here for lunch? Yes, and don't you realize I have to prepare the food? And I don't know what to cook. I just don't know what to cook. <laughs> I mean, meat is so high now, I just don't know what to cook. Yes, yes I know that meat is very expensive, but hey. you, you see, that's why I'm here. We're going to have a barbecue to start it? I think what would be very good would be to have a, a large green mixed salad. A mixed green salad for a thousand men? Oh, let's not get sick <laughs> Good heavens. Well, we'll get it all fixed up then. I'll go out here and get it for you. All right, you go right ahead. Bring it in. If I've got to cook it, boys, I'll bring it in here. Oh, there we are. Hey, did you get that down at the dump? Good, good. That's all. <laughs> There shall be nothing old time, boy. Well, there we go. Meat and no potatoes. <laughs> 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 